Good morning, and welcome to Community of Hope in Wilsonville, Oregon. God bless you, and welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're here with us today, and we pray that you'll be blessed as we uh, go into our worship time today. It's Pentecost Sunday, and so uh, churches throughout the world are calling upon the presence and power of the Holy Spirit and remembering that day over 2,000 years ago when the Spirit first came on those first followers of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is powerfully present as we call upon him uh, even today to fill us, to give us hope, to give us all that fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So let's pray that the Holy Spirit would descend on us and upon our world that needs uh, God's love and his presence. Amen? So again, welcome. Uh, today we are starting our first, uh, our first Sunday in our new worship series. Our series is called Real People, Real Faith. Men and women of the Bible, and we're focusing on Noah today as we start. We're going to be focusing on this theme through the 15 weeks of summer, and this is the first one that we start this out with. Um, a few announcements as we begin. One very exciting and good news announcement that we need to hear today. We have a new member of Community of Hope. Uh, Jaslyn was born to Janine and Jono uh, just yesterday. And what a precious, beautiful, perfect gift from God. So we're so thankful to God for this precious gift of new life. And God bless you, Janine. Jono and your family. I love that verse from Psalm 139. I praise you, you, because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. So again, God bless you and your family, and we look forward to uh, welcoming this new precious baby soon here to our family. Um, also, some things coming up now as we look into the week. We've got a worship night uh, with Mike. Wednesday nights have been a great night to just to worship and praise and fun and fellowship. So we're keeping that going Wednesday nights. Um, youth ministries are also continuing Monday, Tuesday, Thursday for our middle school and high schoolers. So connect with Hillary if you're not yet uh, engaged with that or want details on how to connect. Uh, Kids Church as well uh, continues on Thursday mornings, so another great way to connect uh, with one another and with God's Word. Uh, thanks to Hillary for leading that. And our newsletters are coming out regularly, so we'd love to have you on that newsletter list. If you're not receiving that, uh, please uh, connect with our office staff, and we'd love to connect you with all the things that are happening and the things that will be happening as we move forward. We're prayerfully and deliberately making steps to see how we can gradually uh, welcome in uh, others as well to our gatherings here. And so just pray for us as we seek to wisely and carefully and lovingly welcome in back our church family and others as well in person. But uh, that news will be coming out soon as we uh, make those decisions and determine what will be right. In the meantime, again, we are glad that you're here online and any way that you can participate, uh, give, bless, uh, we're so thankful. So uh, there's one way just through online giving, of course, through mailing in donations to the church too. So thank you and God bless you as we patiently just get through this time together. We like to have participation in our worship, so if you're able to, uh, if you're on Facebook Live especially, and a little bit through Free Church Online too, that platform, you can make some little comments or requests, prayer requests, but uh, be sure to share it if you're on Facebook. Share it with your friends, uh, make prayer requests, uh, you can answer the, the question of the day that I'll bring up in just a moment, and so love to see that participation in ways we can bless one another and, and be present with each other. As I mentioned, our series that uh, is just starting today, our 15-week summer series, Real People, Real Faith, and uh, focusing on 15 men and women of the Bible, starting with Noah today. So if you're talking about Noah, you got to talk about water. And here's my question, or questions, you can answer any version of this that you would like, and write them down, um, and or Type them in to the uh, Facebook Live comment section and prayer requests too. We'd like those to come in sooner rather than later so we can be sure to compile them and I can pray for you towards the end of our service. But uh, the question too that you can write in that comments bar is this. What have been your best and or worst water experiences? Right? On the river, lake, ocean, you name it. But uh, maybe where it's been a good experience, you're out in the cruise ship and it's just lovely or maybe where things were pretty dicey and maybe even life and death were in the balance and that overall theme is when have you seen the floodwaters too rise 
in your life. And maybe literally some of you have been through that, through flooding and the, the devastation of that. So uh, uh, this is our theme for the day. And as we go into this series again, let's uh, call upon the Lord. Let's pray and invite him to guide us uh, and, and really to bless our world. And as I open with prayer today, I just want to acknowledge the challenging seasons that we've been going through personally and also that our world is going through, and especially our nation. I know we're all battling these uh, times of illness with the COVID-19 and all the uncertainty about that and navigating through that. And then we've seen over this past week a lot of just horrible things. Uh, that uh, tragic death of George Floyd that was so sad, that life that was taken. And it's we hard to understand how this happened. And so there's grieving, and there's been protests and assemblies right in our own city, in our own area. And we understand people need to, to, to uh, assemble and to protest things like this. Yet we're very troubled, and I got it from my heart, just troubled to see all the news very recently, too, about the, the riots and the looting and the ugliness that really does not make any sense. And I know we've all been troubled by that, and we're... Uh, uh, people's uh, livelihood, businesses have been taken away through the vandalism and the horrific things. So we want to pray for our nation, from Minneapolis to Portland and all the cities uh, in our c country that are going through this time. And we need to pray. This is Pentecost Sunday, as I mentioned. And we need, if ever we needed the power and presence of the Holy Spirit to bless, to heal, to guide us, to guide our nation, it's now, to guide our world. Uh, and so uh, let's invite uh, the Holy Spirit to come down as we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your presence is needed in our lives. We're thankful for the presence of the Savior Jesus. Thankful for the gift of your Holy Spirit that would come and uh, move in a mighty way in our lives personally as we humble ourselves before you, as we confess our sin, our brokenness, as we see the Holy Spirit's power and presence and pray that it would descend upon our nation, upon our cities, and all the devastation that's happened recently. So as you blew into the lives of the first believers 2,000 years ago, we pray that you would blow into our lives today, wash over our nation, cleanse us from hate, anger, and injustice. May we do justice, may we love kindness, may we walk humbly with you. So, Lord, pray that you would enter our worship today as we gather in many homes, in many places, throughout a community of hope and throughout our community and even, even throughout our world. We're thankful for your promised presence to bring healing, to bring uh, peace and healing where there's division. Come, Lord Jesus, uh, bless this time. Holy Spirit, descend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join together and sing, give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise with the mighty Arm. His love endures forever For the life that's been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever
whatever you do, Lord, let's sing together. Whatever you do, Lord, I want to be part of this. I know your story. I've read it cover to cover. And I know the storms that will come. The waves will swell and the sky will darken. Though you'll fight against the current, you'll be swept away. You'll feel helpless and abandoned. And you'll wonder where I am in the midst of it all. I know this isn't the way you thought our relationship would work, but my plans are not for my comfort or yours. My purposes are always and only an expression of love. The scars in my hands are proof that love will sometimes lead you directly into the storm. Though you can't understand my plans, you can trust in one thing, that I am entirely good you can't even imagine how good I am, and my plan for you is no different. When you shout asking where I am, know that I am right behind you, with my arms wrapped tightly around you, whispering, I will never let go. For you are the pinnacle of my creation and the center of my affection. There will come a day when I will quiet every storm, and wipe away every tear. In that day, there will be no more pain or death. But until that day comes, I will be your anchor in this storm.
Isn't that true that uh, God is our anchor in the midst of all the storms and the confusion around us in our world today? We see it so clearly, the conflict, the confusion, the racism, all the things that are going on, the riots, yet we pray, we continue to pray, Jesus bring peace, Jesus bring reconciliation, Jesus bring healing. And, you know, I got to admit, in the midst of all the uh, hard things going on in our world right now, uh, wasn't it uh, encouraging to see signs of hope from what I just shared with you about baby Jaslyn being born yesterday morning? Uh, Wow, that just warmed my heart and that all went well. And then even the things that we see, like the space shuttle, SpaceX, all that that's going on right now, and that had happened, and it's working, and there's smiles, and there's uh, something good (laughs) that happened in our world, right? So uh, thankful for that kind of little bit of encouragement as well. And as we get into our theme for today, real people, real faith, as we start with Noah, I encourage you to have your Bibles with you. We're going to start with a passage from uh, Genesis chapter 6, and we'll also be looking at a passage at the end of Matthew towards the end of my message. So have your Bible ready to Genesis and even to the end of the book of Matthew if you'd like to mark that. And uh, in the midst of this world and this season, I had that question for you, and many of you have answered our question for today about water. And uh, we recognize water, that it's, it's vital, right? It's vital for life, and it's, 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 it makes things grow, and we need water. Our bodies need so much water to be healthy and, and so grateful to have clean sources of water personally. And we see the need in our world, and we create opportunities for people to you know, get, dig wells and to create uh, fresh water in places where people don't have it. Uh, But also water can be very hazardous. Water can bring death. And we had a little glimpse of that uh, yesterday about the thunder and lightning and the uh, water and how that sometimes results in, thankfully not yesterday, but it can result in floods and other damage and things like that as well. So that's why I asked, what have been your, thinking of Noah and thinking of the story for today, uh, what have been your best and worst water experiences? So uh, thankful to uh, my son Caleb, he's compiled a few of these responses that you've sent in, so thank you Caleb. So worst, best, and there's a a variety of things. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Isa, she said, just live in the Philippines (laughs) and you'll know all about floodwaters. Okay, some places get it pretty, pretty tough. Uh, Henry said his worst experience, caught in a riptide in Taiwan. Wow. Um, Let's see. Oh, Dana here, she said, almost drowned in a pool when I was three. Wow, even CPR to save you. That's about as close as it gets. Um, Let's see. Oh, Charles, Chuck said, first time on skis. Water skis, he relaxed and leaned back and must have been a hard fall. Chuck, sorry to hear about that. Okay. Um, Oh, another one. Let's see. Ooh, this is Tamara. Water experience I will never forget in Kodiak, Alaska. Middle school students on a field trip uh, on a fishing boat around Kodiak. On the way back, a storm, waves were like a wall washing over the boat. Uh, had to tie the students to the side of the boat uh, so they wouldn't be washed overboard. Water came crashing. Field trip to remember. Wow. I suppose those field trips maybe aren't happening today. <laughs> Just guessing. Uh, wow. Bonnie says the boat broke down in Florida. Uh, Derek, Stephen, brother-in-law had to jump in and pull it to shore. Whew. Okay. Hard, hard times. Uh, another good, good thing, so best thing, swimming in the beach in Florida, Kelly said, uh, getting baptized in the Willamette River. I remember that, Kelly, you and your family, that was awesome. Uh, Teresa, best, swimming in the ocean beyond the waves. Another one, best, from Hillary, Dominican Republic, Mexico mission trips, and with our community of hope, youth, the beach day, awesome. Linda said, kayaking with friends. Uh, Henry had a good one, too, sailing under the London Bridge in Arizona. Wow. So lots of experiences that uh, you've had, I've had, we've all had in different ways with water. Um, I guess one of the ones that uh, I remember particularly, uh, just some good experiences, were just, uh, I've gotten a chance to get back to the beach a couple times as they've been opening up, 
And so uh, it's just uh, the good things remind us there's a little bit of hope and promise. Water is uh, okay. But here is a scene from uh, uh, Otter Rock. I've been out to Otter Rock and Agate Beach. And uh, just beautiful, calm waters. It was one of the calmest days I've seen out there. And, of course, when you go to Otter Rock, you've got to get some clam chowder from Moe's. So those are some good days as we think about. And uh, I think about this, and I think about, too, the different times where it has been more than challenging, where I've uh, you know, been held down under the water um, when I thought I lost my son out in the ocean. And he was okay, praise God. I've shared with some of you that story. But uh, thinking again about these stories, and, and again, that theme, when have you seen uh, the floodwaters rise? When have you seen that happen? Some of you have literally. Thank you, Isa, as you shared about the, the uh, Philippines and maybe the life and death. Uh, everything's in the balance there in the midst of some of these uh, really uh, places where you really experience the severity of weather. Well, as we get into the story of Noah, I want to introduce just a short clip of a song that really touched my life uh, back in 2010. This song first came out, and it's by a small group called Mike's Chair. Uh, they're now called uh, Grayson Reed, if you want to look them up. It's a really powerful uh, ministry over the years in the past, and now currently Mike and his wife sing together through this group called Grayson Reed. But uh, the song was called Let the Waters Rise, and I'd just like to share this with you as you start to go into now with me the book of Genesis and the story of Noah. So let's uh, listen and uh, watch this uh, illustration. Swim in the deep Cause you'll be next to me You're in the eye of the storm And the calm of the sea You're never out of reach God, you know where I've been And you were there with me then You were faithful before You'll be faithful again I'm whole I think about this song and as I think about uh, in some way that Noah must have thought or said a similar words as we saw in that chorus let the waters rise I will trust in you I'll say that again let the waters rise I will trust in you one uh, author once wrote this he says you know when life is at its worst God is at his best when life is at its worst, God is at his best, meaning he's at work. He's uh, working in ways we cannot see or even understand. And I think that was probably very true as we look to this passage from Genesis chapter 6 and what God was at work and doing, uh, what things we can't even understand or fully comprehend. We trust that God is at work. And I'd like to read uh, this uh, passage, a uh, passage from, as we start to look at Noah, a passage from Genesis 6. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 13 and maybe even into 14. And if you have your Bibles, if you want to just open them up and, um, and follow along with me as I read from Genesis 6, verse 5. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. 
This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. As we read this, it's troubling, isn't it? We often ask questions. How, how would God do this? Why would God do this? And I like to hear, though, how God is uh, very real and present in this situation. And we see in the Bible how it frequently attributes human emotions even to God. And it does here when we read in, in chapter 6, verse 6, it says the Lord was grieved. Others' translations say that God regretted making man. And the biblical authors are using words and, and terms to describe best um, uh, ways God, God is uh, dealing with these things, ways that we can understand. And we need to understand that God's emotions yet are somewhat different, of course, than ours. God is God. He is not human. Uh, God isn't sorry here in the sense that he did something wrong when he made man. And the wickedness of man, of humankind, doesn't surprise him or catch him off guard either. But think about this. God is holy. God is completely other than us. And his regret stems from his holiness. And God knew that man's sin deserved to be punished. And that was going to require him to pour out his wrath against that sin. And that broke his heart. He was grieved. And, 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 and again, I want to go back to this theme, yet when life is at its worst, God is at its best, at his best. And in Genesis 6, 6 8, we see God's grace and mercy about to yet be poured out. And we see that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. God is gonna, not going to completely wipe out uh, humankind. And this is 100% grace. Noah was a good man, says a righteous man, but he was not perfect. He wasn't sinless. But he had a heart for God in, a, in the midst of a very godless world. And we see the verses that I ended with where God said to Noah, I'm going to put in verses uh, 6, verses uh, 13 and 14. God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it. Coat it with pitch inside and out. So God speaks to Noah. And I don't know. Again, let's, let's think about Noah and the, his humanity. And what would God, what would Noah, how would Noah reply to God about this? Uh, rain? We haven't seen rain forever. And what do you mean by a flood? And God, this ark that you want me to build... Uh, that's going to save us from this flood? How's this all going to happen? And you mean you're actually going to kill off all the rest of my friends and relatives? And I guess there were a lot of enemies, maybe two around that time. And maybe he wasn't too sad about losing some. And I'm not going to make any like mother-in-law jokes here or anything. But there had to be some people he liked. And he couldn't imagine that God was going to just wipe everybody out. But yet, in spite of whatever questions he might have had, Noah was obedient to God. In the last verse of chapter, uh, in chapter 6, verse 22, uh, it reads, Noah did all that God commanded him. Noah did all that God commanded him. So Noah followed through. Noah went on ahead, and he went and built this ark. We don't know exactly how long it took. Uh, we can get a rough idea by what the scriptures reveal. We know I had his first son when he was 500 years old. I enters the ark when he's about 600 years old. So depending on how long it took for his sons to grow up, get married, not unreasonable to assume Noah took between 50 and 75 years to build the ark. And again, this is the time where there were enemies cropping up and people were ridiculing Noah and his family uh, during that time. 
and probably far worse than any of us have experienced as a result of being followers of Jesus here in our country. But persecution for following the Lord is a real thing. And it was present as it is today in our country, in our world. And it was present there as Noah was building this ark that people thought he was absolutely crazy. And as I think about the context of Noah, and as I think about the dark times in the world then, I think about the dark times in the world today, we sometimes are starting to wonder, how much darker can it get? You know, what's next? But God kept his promise to Noah. And God continued to do as he said he would do. And the, and the earth was flooded. In, uh, in Genesis seven seventeen, we read, For 40 days the flood kept coming on the earth, as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. Let the waters rise. Noah's saying, as these waters are rising, I will trust in you. So what would you do to stay hopeful during this time? Everything is flooded. You're floating with your family in this ark. And what would you do to stay hopeful? Was God going to keep the end of his promise? And I think, again, these themes run through our lives at various seasons of our lives regularly. And, and today, you know, do we see, is there an end in sight when things will, so to speak, go back to normal, whatever normal will be as we go through this season? Uh, just when things start to look brighter and things are opening up, we see this uh, uh, horrific death caught on, ca on camera in Minneapolis and and then we see protests, and those evolve into riots by a, probably a select few of people that are just trying to take advantage of the situation. And it's right in our own backyard, and we're troubled, and we're in pain. And some people, again, very directly impacted from the life of George Floyd and his family impacted to, I uh, see scenes, as you see on the news, of just small business owners that are, what are they going to do now when their business is ransacked and destroyed? I think we need to keep looking, though, keep reminding ourselves that uh, there are signs of hope, and we're going to turn now uh, from Genesis 6, if you can page forward uh, uh, to a couple chapters ahead, to Genesis chapter 8. I'd like us to look at uh, uh, this uh, promise here of the olive leaf, Genesis 8, verses 6 through 11. After 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find no place to set its feet because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand took the dove, and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days, and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. And I'd like to highlight that verse. Uh, when the dove returned to him in the evening and its beak was this freshly plucked leaf. And sign of hope. A sign of promise. Uh, one of my favorite authors, uh, Max Lucado, said this. He said, during trying times, God sends an olive leaf of hope to assure us there is dry land after a flood. Isn't that a great quote? During trying times, look for that, that olive leaf of hope to give us assurance. And I love Jesus' words um, as he was going to be soon going to the cross to die for you and for me in the sins of the world. And his disciples were troubled and he said this. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I keep sta stating this uh, phrase that I read that's just so powerful. When life is at its worst, God is at his best. Isn't that more clearly seen in, in the life of Jesus? Uh, soon to be going to the cross. What could be 
the worst thing uh, to happen, uh, and it was about to happen for Jesus to be crucified on a cross. But God wasn't done. God was about to do his finest work. And that's who our God is. God's a God of resurrection. God is a God of new life. As we put our hope, as we put our trust in him, he will not fail us. Um, looking into Genesis chapter 9, another sign of peace and hope. And if you just page through those chapters, you see in Genesis 9, verses 12 and 13, that uh, God was making a new covenant with Noah, with us, never to flood the earth again. And God sealed that covenant with a sign, what we call a rainbow. And one version of the Bible, the ESV, translates it as not rainbow, but as the word bow. And think about this with me. In the flood, God bent his bow in wrath. Almost like an arrow and a bow. And the wrath was seen. But now he promises to hang up that bow in the sky. Where everyone can see it. And whenever you see these beautiful rainbows after the rain, you can kind of recognize that. Right, that promise. Okay, God isn't going to destroy as he did in the days of Noah. Uh, But God's covenant is with you and with me and has continued to be fully revealed more and more. And that covenant remains with us today. And yeah, we don't have to fear the same kind of rain that Noah and his family had. uh, But I believe that rainbow is a sign that grace triumphs over judgment. And again, any time that we're going through seasons like this, we'd see at a time like this, Jesus come. Yeah, the world deserves judgment But yeah, we live right now, we're living in the age of grace, where God has, uh, God is coming, Jesus is coming again, and his judgment is coming, but till that day at the end of the age. And we live in a period of grace, and Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling to us today, and Jesus is ready to receive all who will listen to his voice and receive him. And I'd like to look at a passage now from Matthew. Uh, this is a passage from Matthew 24, as you see on your, on your screen. From Matthew 24, that reminds us again that, yes, Christ is coming again. And how can we prepare? We are called to be ready uh, for that day when Jesus does come again. Beginning with verse 36. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. They knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding in the, with a hand mill, one will be taken, the other left. Therefore keep watch. Because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Be ready. Christ is coming. We don't know the time or the hour. And times are urgent today. There is so much speculation on end times and what we are seeing today is this fulfillment of prophetic words that we see in Scripture about the the, the time that Christ is is coming is imminent, that he will be here any hour, any minute, any day. Well, what should we do to prepare? We prepare our hearts daily as we look to Jesus. And we remember One phrase I'd like to share with you as we think about Jesus, that he still saves. Differently than in the time of Noah, not by an ark made of wood, but through the cross made of wood. And we see his answer. We see his, uh, the way that Jesus has provided for us in that greatest sacrifice of all, in that darkest, darkest time, God was powerfully present. And we see the reminder that he bore his sins, bore our sins on his body on a tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. 
I love this symbol, this picture of a reminder of a, what do we do? We look to Jesus. And I've shared this picture several times since these baptisms were celebrated back in July of last year. But I just keep remi- being reminded of it. Kelly even mentioned it in her comments about best remembrance of water is being baptized. And this beautiful images of your family and others from Community of Hope being baptized. But I think about how Jesus died for us, for our sins, to bring us to God. Uh, and we see that continually in 1 Peter, that reminder, similar to the verse we just read from 1 Peter 3.18. And we're made alive by the Spirit. And uh, Peter goes on to talk about the reminders about how Noah and people were saved through water. And now through baptism, we are saved. And in, in, in 1 Peter 3.21, it says, Baptism saves you, not the removal of dirt from the body, But the pledge of a good conscience towards God, it saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you've been baptized, recall that, remember that today. And that outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday, the water that uh, God, that was poured over your head or your forehead, whether it was immersion or baptism as an infant, God did a mighty work in your life. And when you were baptized and God claimed you, As his child, live in that, walk in that, be reminded of that today, even as you're uh, washing your face, or uh, maybe you're going to take a a swim in the ocean of the river, mark yourself with the sign of the cross as you take a shower, and just remember, I'm God's precious child, I've been sealed by the cross of Christ, marked by that promise forever. If you haven't been baptized, I would love to talk with you about it. I'd love to, during these summer months now, to even celebrate a baptism. If we can't do it publicly with a lot of people, we could do it privately, whether you're here at church or whether it's in the Willamette River or the ocean. But let's, let's use that reminder that God is powerfully present and do what Jesus commands. And we, we die to sin, we drown to sin, and we rise up again in new life. Uh, and to new life in Jesus. The water, together with God's word, promises us this new life in Jesus' name. I'd like you to think of a few things as we close today. As you think about your situation in life, where you might be right now. Where are you? Are you safely docked in a secure port and maybe just waiting out the raging seas that are just outside of the breakwater? Or do you feel like you're drifting or even in a time where it's like water's rising and whether it's challenges with, with specifically with illness, whether it's challenges that are job related or crisis that you don't see how you're going to dig out of this, whether it's other uh, situations that you're going through if you've even been directly impacted this week by any of the fallout from all the things that are going on in our world, um, how you doing? And are you on board with Jesus during this season? Our lives as those disciples were safe in the boat with Jesus. If you haven't received that promise of Jesus' love, of his, uh, of his desire to make his home in your heart, I would love to talk with you. If you can just privately message or comment or share that you'd like to speak more about the promise of Jesus, I would love to pray with you and talk with you about how your life can be right with the Lord and how you can know d- deep, deep down in your heart God's deep, deep love for you and what Christ has done. Please let me know how I can pray for you. And then finally, is there an olive leaf that you need to receive right now to assure you? Then that dove returned and assured Noah that life was, new life was coming. Right? There's, there's, the flood was going to end. Is there something that you need? right now to assure you of this i pray that god's word has been an assurance for you today and you've heard and received some good news about god's love and can you give that olive leaf what can you do to assure them to encourage them today sometimes it's a simple thing as picking up a phone and making a phone call or making a safe visit to a friend that uh, may be feeling isolated or alone uh, praying, uh, doing whatever you can tangibly. And uh, we want to know this too as a church. Are, how are you doing? Are you in pain? Are you struggling? Let me know. Let's, we want to know how we can uh, seek to be a blessing to you, to your family uh, through this season and through this time. Uh, we're going to pray in a moment here. And uh, again, I'm thankful for the prayer requests. Thank you to Hillary for compiling these and sending them to me. 
And um, just a reminder as we pray, I just encourage you to stay in the Word. And next week we're going to look at another hero of the faith. Uh, we're going to alternate between men and women of the Bible, and next week it's Sarah. And that passage, passages from Genesis 11 through 22. So uh, just again, looking at the promises of God through unlikely people that weren't perfect, but that God used in mighty ways. And that's our story, too, today. So let's, uh, let's join in prayer. I'll uh, open with some prayers and requests that I've already received uh, throughout this week. And uh, as I receive them again, too, we'll continue to pray for the needs that, um, that you express. So thank you for lifting up those prayer requests. And let's bow in prayer to the Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we're uh, grateful for your hand of mercy, your hand of grace that's upon us thankful for signs like even the rainbows that we see in this beautiful part of the country where there's rain and there's sunshine and there's the beautiful sign of the rainbow that's a reminder that yes your judgment came and Jesus you are coming again and we have hope and promise in you and that trust that you are there for us and that your grace is more than sufficient and you provide for us in Jesus and so I pray for any heart that's yet to receive that promise Jesus come and trust in you. Forgive our sin. Fill us with your righteousness that purifies us, that cleanses us, that renews our hearts. We put our trust in you. And come, Lord Jesus, into my heart, the heart of all that would receive you. In your name. God, we uh, pray in the midst of this time of, of illness, uh, Lord, of the coronavirus, and the people that are suffering in our city, in our state, in our nation, and in our world. We pray for healing and, and for hope and for blessing upon any that are, are suffering through this time. God, we pray for our, our nation, our world, and we lift up again a memory of the man who passed away, George Floyd, ask your blessing upon his family and others that mourn through senseless violence or, uh, or even racism and, and effects that have happened to them. We just pray for those suffering through this time. And uh, we acknowledge the people's uh, frustration, yet we pray for an end to the senseless rioting and uh, the destruction and the pain that's being caused. We pray for people's hearts to be changed and to be drawn to peace and to the promise of, of your hope. We pray for our divided country in so many ways, whether it be politically or over these recent days. God, we pray that uh, you would... Uh, uh, protect those who are seeking to uh, bring security and peace. Uh, Lord, we pray for our nation, for our president, for our governor, uh, for our local leaders, for our law enforcement. And uh, Lord, we uh, just pray again for your healing and, and blessing to be upon our, our community, our city, and upon our world. Uh, Lord, we pray for others that are struggling through seasons of challenge through employment. We continue to lift up Mike and Todd and Daniel and just continue to pray for provision for them. Others that are going through challenges related to this heightened season of, of uh, business and employment and job security. Just pray for your peace to reign. And Lord, we pray too for uh, just your healing presence as well uh, upon others. And I just lift up these prayers that have been offered. Uh, for Daniel, prayers for healing for his ankle. Uh, and celebration too for Issa's new job. Uh, lift up Lisa, her family, lift up her mother Lynn in the hospital with serious heart issues. Uh, just pray for th their family as well. Uh, pray for healing for Joni McNeil, for Stephen Bushman. Lord, we pray for Margaret, for Helena's mother, um, away from her in Oakland. We pray for uh, just for blessing upon many health conditions she's battling. Lord, we pray for Kyoko and just uh, dealing with the heart issue, but thankful she's getting receiving good care in the hospital and that she is secure and just pray for good diagnosis of tests that would help her and may she heal and, and be strengthened and bless uh, Stephen and all their family as well. Lord, we lift up uh, Connie and prayers for her mom, Ruth, and just being able to travel to see her uh, very soon now, be able to talk to the people she needs to talk with regarding hospice and uh, church and pastor that would care for them. All the details, Lord, of, as her end of life uh, seems imminent, Lord, we just pray that you would give them comfort and, uh, and just by your gracious hand bring her to, your, to her heavenly home whenever that day might be. So God, we're thankful again, thankful that you hear our prayers uh, thankful, Lord, for 
uh, your church and the uh, request that we continue to pray for one another, that we encourage one another uh, during all these seasons. And we pray and eagerly anticipate gathering together uh, in some way as we are able to and as we're able to with our health concerns and others. We're, but we're thankful today for this opportunity, thankful that you are present with us, thankful on this day of Pentecost for your Holy Spirit's presence and power that would mightily descend upon each one of us, and that we would be your agents for bringing the hope and peace that only you can bring unto those around us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join me as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive a blessing, a benediction, to send you on your way into this day, whatever this day will bring, uh, filled with God's presence, his peace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all God's people said, I pray that our lives, our own personal lives, are not in the turmoil that we are dealing with with the world. That you have found peace and know that God is with you all the time. Uh, that is my prayer. My prayer is also for this church. That God moves in our hearts, especially this day. Um, as God poured out his Holy Spirit onto his disciples so many years ago. As we celebrate Pentecost, how is the Spirit speaking to your heart? How is the Spirit helping us rise above the floodwaters? How is the Spirit helping each of us, wherever we might be, reach out to those around us? As awkward as it, as it might seem, are we, are we reaching people with the gospel of Jesus? The good news that Jesus saves, that Jesus forgives, that Jesus accepts that Jesus is the one who gives us the power to become more and more like God. Perfect in every way. Through the process of sanctification as we are made more and more like, like God, set apart and holy, uh, reaching even more people. People will see the good in us and go, wow, what does that person have? Because we have God. Because we have the Holy Spirit living and residing and helping us do that. I encourage you to take a step in faith. Knowing that the Spirit is guiding you. Who is God r reaching you to reach? Who is God using you to reach? So as we sing this last song, let us remember these, these truths that we've heard about Noah and his faithfulness and God's faithfulness to all of us through Noah. Let's sing together. You call me out upon the waters The great unknown Where feet may fail Sing a community of hope. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you are. 
Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Sing it. Thank you to our leaders here today with worship and the tech side of things and just being, uh, thank you all for being present with us here uh, in worship today. And let's go out as uh, God leads us. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God and give them heaven.